You want to save yourself thousands of dollars and have a gorgeous green lawn that looks like a pro installed it? Well, you can bite the bullet and have sod installed or you can seed it yourself. Now my company installs at least one lawn a week and I tell each one of my customers they have an option. They can hire me to install sod for them and their lawn will instantly look like this or I can sit down at their kitchen table and in five minutes teach them how to overseed their lawn and make it look like a pro did it. And guess what? That's what you're going to learn today. I'm going to show you what I show each and every one of my customers, how that they can cheat, save thousands of dollars, and do the job themselves. So let's get started. All right, here we go. This whiteboard is your lawn. And this pepper is your seed. Now I'm going to show you the pattern. This is the most critical element. A lot of people think that you want the more seed, the better. You really want to get a big pile of seed, and that's going to give you a lush green lawn. Nothing could be further from the truth. When you have a pattern like this, what happens is the seeds compete against each other, and they kill each other off. <sighs> that's the last thing you want. In this case, what you want, and there's no fancy tools. Let's get this straight. I, When I overseed my lawns, I do it with these tools right here. I prefer not to use a broadcast spreader. I prefer not to use a walk behind spreader. I prefer to, good, to use good old fingers and looking at my pattern and making sure that I have it. And to, and to do it light the first time. So, here's your seed. You're not going to get it right the first time. This may be a little bit difficult to see, so we will zoom in. And that's perfect. You, you don't have to see it the first time you, you do the seeding. But you spread the seed down, and then if you have gaps in your coverage, right here I have a little bit of a gap, then I go back through it, and then I fill in those little gaps. And what you want is an even distribution with a little bit of space in between and then you lightly rake that into the subsoil and you water it and then you have patience it's as simple as that okay as promised here's a close-up of that pattern oh here I am messing it up it's too heavy in one spot that's gonna kill your grass this is all seed remember I'm spreading it out this is just like if I was raking it in the lawn There you go, simple as that. An even distribution with space in between. Doesn't get any easier guys and gals. There's no reason to hire a pro to do something you can do with your own fingers. Have a good one my friends. As the grass germinates and comes up, then you'll come back later and you'll reseed again. Now question you should ask me is what kind of seed do I use? Simple. Go to Menards, go to Lowe's, go to Home Depot. It's all the same. They all have quality seed. Now if you have a yard anything like mine, if you look in the background beyond the deck, you'll see that there's areas of sun, there's areas of shade. Your standard landscapers mix is going to cover it. But if you don't have any trees in your yard, get a sunny mix. Or if you have a highly shaded area that never sees sun, get a shade mixture. Here's a tip for you. If you go with sod, if you lay sod, <coughs> you still have to overseed. Yes, you do. Why? Because all sod is grown in direct sunlight. There's no trees on a sod farm. They don't grow sod underneath trees, plain and simple. So that's a sunny mixture. Most people's yards have one or two trees in it. And what happens is when you put that sod that's accustomed to being in direct sunlight in shade, it's going to die. Now it's not going to die in 30 days, 60 days, it's not even gonna die that summer, but in three, four, five years, that sod's going to die, okay? So what you do is you overseed the sod with a shade mixture. 
And what that does is that allows the shade mixture to grow in as the sun mixture dies off, keeping your lawn lush, green, and looking beautiful under any circumstances. So what's the second most critical component to seeding a lawn? Well, that's your base material. That is making sure that you have a good layer of black dirt down. Now, a lot of times you'll hear the quote, you gotta put four inches of base material down. That's hogwash, okay? You never put, you never layer the soil in a four inch layer where if this is your subsoil, this is clay or sand, you just slap four inches of black dirt down. Because if this was clay, what would happen is that grass, that grass would be too rich the, the, the black dirt would be too rich for it and it would root systems would go down and hit that clay layer and then get stuck okay so you what you really want to do is you want to mix black dirt into the upper layer of soil whether that's a clay whether that's a sand or whatever it doesn't make a difference you want to incorporate it in that gives your seed a deeper base for it to germinate and it's just easier to work with so the two critical elements even distribution of the seed and having a good layer of uh, subsoil for it to grow in. Simple as that. Don't overseed too heavily. When I say too heavily, remember, avoid that. When you get that, you're going to have a dead spot in your lawn. Instead, if you do get that, rake your seeds out. Rake them out. So it's spread evenly across the board with a nice distribution, a nice pattern in between. Voila! It's just like I had a rake and I was going over my yard. That's the key. That's how the pros do it. You can do it too. Save yourself thousands of dollars in sodding a yard. Or give me a call. I'll go sod your yard for you. Have a good one. God bless. Love you guys.